Hey Mac, I think I found something on Aqui's hair. Hello Trisha. Oh no. Have you already consulted to his doctor of what kind of tick is that? If not, there are different kinds of ticks and one of them is heart ticks. Ticks coming from the family Ixodidae are known to occur worldwide. However, they are more common in temperate regions. There are 713 species that belong to 12 genera. The medically important genera are Ixodes, Dermacentor, Amblyoma, Haemapisalis, Ripicephalus, and Hyaloma. Puffilus annulatus was the former genera of Ripicephalus, thus belonging to Ripicephalus genera. This indicates that majority of these species are medically important, and there are no recent evidences regarding the newly discovered medically important species of hard ticks. Hard ticks are flattened dorsoventrally, and they have an oval shape. Their size is about 2 to 23 millimeters long, and this size depends on what type of species, as well as if they are unfed or full of blood. Female hard ticks are bigger compared to males. So why do you think they have a bigger size? Well, it is because they consume more blood while feeding. Festoons are rectangular indentations on the posterior margin of the body of Dermacentor, Ribicephalus, and Haemapisalis species. However, it is not that evident in females when they are engorged with blood. The hard ticks have a dorsal plate known as cutum and this is absent in soft ticks. Males have a massive scutum that covers virtually the whole dorsal surface of the body, while the females have a much smaller scutum that is localized to the anterior half of the body. In well-fed females, the scutum may be difficult to perceive because it seems little in comparison to the expanded body and becomes pushed forward so that it is almost in vertical position. The scutum of Dermacentor, Amblyoma, and some Ripicephalus ticks contains enameled colored regions in both sexes, and such ticks are regarded as ornate species. The scutum allows for the instant identification of hard ticks. Both sexes consume blood mills and are thus potential disease vectors. The scutum is tiny in both sexes during the larval and nymphal stages. There are four pairs of legs, each with a pair of claws at the end. Heart ticks do not have coxal organs. Internal organs are similar to those found in soft or argacid ticks. Aside from the presence of a toothed hypostome, the scutum or heart plate found on the dorsal part of the tick was also used to identify them. On the contrary, soft ticks lack a scutum and have a wrinkled body and their males and females almost have a similar in size. The exodid ticks also have a heavy metabolous life cycle just like in argacid ticks, indicating that they undergo an incomplete metamorphosis including larval and nymphal stages. The time taken for females in laying eggs and ingesting blood meal differs within species and environmental conditions, particularly in the temperature. Their small round-shaped eggs coated with a waxy secretion are usually laid in a jelly-like mass formed above the tick's scutum and anteriorly ranging 1,000 to 10,000 eggs. Oviposition process sometimes begins 3 to 6 days after the female tick drops from the host. However, it may not begin a few weeks or months after the last feeding. And this also lasts about 10 days or prolonged over a month or more. They only lay a single batch of eggs, after that she dies. The duration of hatching occurs after 10 to 20 days to several months, resulting in six-legged larvae or seed ticks as they are small in size. The larvae stay on their hosts for 3 to 7 days before setting down to the ground and isolating themselves under stones or vegetation. Following that is the formation of the eight-legged nymphs 
climbing up to the vegetation, and seeks the host or in a questing manner. And lastly, the emerging adults remain inactive for a week after residing in vegetation and questing for hosts. Female adults of Ixodid take large amounts of blood meals, consuming 1 to 8 millimeters of blood. On the other hand, male Ixodid ingests less blood. All species belonging to the Ixodidae family have an incomplete metamorphosis, or in common terms is hemimetabolus. And these are the two immature stages. First is the larval stage and second is the nymphal stage. Many exuded tick species are host-specific in some way. Some species, for instance, feed entirely on birds while others feed almost on reptiles or specific types of mammals only such as bats, canids, or bovids. Some other species feed on almost any available host including humans. The presence of a wide range of host species may increase the risk of disease transmission. Many, but not all, Tick larvae and nymphs prefer feeding on small animals such as rodents, cats, and dogs, and ground-dwelling birds, whereas adults feed on cattle, deer, horses, and a range of large and wild mammals. Humans are mostly parasitized by hard tick larvae and nymphs, with adults appearing only in rare cases. Hard ticks are vectors of typhuses such as Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever, Mediterranean Spotted Fever, and Q fever. Many arboviruses including tick-borne encephalitis, OMS hemorrhagic fever, Kisanur forest disease, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, Colorado tick fever are transmitted by hard ticks. They also transmit tularemia and cause tick paralysis. Tick paralysis is induced by toxins in the female tick saliva that are constantly injected into the host during the tick's protracted feeding period. The capacity of ticks to cause tick paralysis in humans and animals varies greatly between species and populations of the same species. Female hard ticks, mainly the species of Dermacentor and Ixodes, can cause tick paralysis. It affects humans as well as pets and domesticated animals. Symptoms usually begin 4 to 7 days after a female tick has begun to feed. There is an immediate ascending paralysis affecting first the legs, causing the patient to be unable to walk or stand, and then the arms, causing trouble speaking, swallowing, and breathing. There is no pain associated with the symptoms. There are more than 120 arboviruses that are linked with ticks, but significant tick-borne viral diseases are spread by hard ticks. The tick bite transmits all arboviruses and transoviral transmission is common. Tick-borne encephalitis is a viral infectious disease that targets the central nervous system, causing long-term neurological symptoms and in extreme cases, death. Tick-borne encephalitis is caused by a flavivirus with three subtypes. First is European subtype carried by Ixodes ricinus ticks found in rural and forested areas of Central, Eastern, and Northern Europe. Second is Far Eastern subtype carried by Ixodes persulcatus found in Far Eastern Russia as well as forested areas of China and Japan. Third is Siberian type transmitted by Exodus persulcatus found in Ural regions, Siberia, and far eastern Russia and some parts of northeast Europe. About 22 species of Rickettsia cause tick-borne viruses that are distributed globally. These ticks are considered as the main reservoir of infection even though other mammal species may be reservoir hosts occasionally. There are two types of transmission such as transtadial and transovarial. Ehrlichia and Anaplasma species are known to infect deer and dogs, and some species of it are zoonotic and might also infect humans. The disease named Human Granulocytic Ehrlichiosis or HGE are caused by the Ehrlichia chapiensis species, while Ehrlichia ewingi and Anaplasma phagocytophilum infect granulocytes with parasites leading to Human Granulocytic Anaplasmosis or HGE. 
The mode of transmission from these three species is through bites of hard ticks such as ixodes and amblyoma species, but deer and rodents seem to be the main reservoir host. Transovarial transmission is probable to happen, and commonly is true transtadial transmission. This disease has an extensive prevalence in USA and Europe, rarely are found to be reported from Africa and Venezuela. Lyme borreliosis or Lyme disease is primarily caused by Spirochete borrelia burgdorferi and in some cases with other species including Borrelia spilmani or Borrelia afzeli. This disease somewhat occurs in 27 European countries including also others like USA, South America, Canada, North Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, Japan, and Australia. The transmission of this disease in Europe is through the bite of Exodus ricinus and in Eurasia by Exodus persulcatus, while in the eastern part of USA the vector is Exodus capillaris and in the western is Exodus pacificus. The transmission happens in both transovarial and transtadial transmission. There are 40 species of Ixodid that are known vectors including the two species from Argosid. Thus, being a zoonotic disease, as 100 animal species have been detected as infected. However, deer are not considered to be reservoir hosts even though they aid a large amount of vector ticks population. The control used for personal protection are also the application of propellants like in soft ticks. Francisella tularensis is the bacteria that causes tularemia disease to animals. And there are four subspecies of this pathogen that can also infect the zoonotic bacterial disease. It usually happens all over Northern Hemisphere and also some parts of Asia, Middle East, Northern Africa, and not often in Australia. The reservoir hosts of this disease are hares and rabbits, which mainly infects them and also the deer, small rodents, and beavers. It is also spread through various direct contact techniques, also through hard text bites. The main vectors in Europe are Dermacentor and Ixodes ricinus species. And the recommended control procedure for hard ticks is to grasp the tick closely to the skin of the host with a worn out pair of forceps by slowly pulling it out. The same goes to the remains of the mouth parts in the skin, then Antiseptic should be applied afterwards. Insecticides can be resistant to ticks. Thus, it may only be used for medical control, an important species of ticks. While ticks that are found in fields or gardens can be killed through the spraying of cyhalotrin, carbaryl, deltamethrin, or propoxor. And pellet formulations are greatly used in dense vegetation to easily pass through their microhabitats. Only one application is needed as it would last for 6 to 8 weeks. We know that most tick bites are painless and only cause minor signs and symptoms. However, being knowledgeable on how harmful they are could save us from the threat that they impose. Let us be aware that these hard ticks could dig in with their mouth full of hooks and learn more about the tiny insects and their impact to our lives.